welcome back. Thank you for coming and cooking with me again today. My name is Kim and this is my fake cooking show, Barefoot in the Kitchen with Kim, where we cook really good food for really good people like you in my really small kitchen. So today we are going to make gluten-free banana chocolate chip muffins with a nice streusel on top and some icing. They are wonderful. I posted a picture of these on Instagram and people were like, please, 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 will you make those on your cooking show? So this is, yeah, that's what the, these look like. And they're big. They're really big. Let me just unwrap this for you so you can see how they turn out. They're massive. You can see the chocolate chips in there. Yeah, these are really good and the streusel on top. So this is what we're going to make today. Yeehaw. So let's get at it. I'm gonna save that one for later. Uh, sorry about the tank top today. Not really very professional for a fake cooking show, but it's super hot today. And this is already so many clothes. Uh, anyway, we'll just deal with it that way. And I'll go through the list of what you need twice. You can go and gather it and then come back and cook with me. So for the streusel on top, you're going to need two thirds cup of flour, whatever kind of flour. These I make gluten free, okay? One quarter cup of granulated sugar, two tablespoons brown sugar, one quarter teaspoon cinnamon, one eighth teaspoon salt, five tablespoons of butter, and that's melted. Now for the muffins itself, you need three cups of gluten-free flour or regular flour if that's what you want to do one tablespoon of baking powder yes one tablespoon one half teaspoon of salt a half a cup of granulated sugar a quarter cup of brown sugar one half cup of coconut oil and that's melted here in thailand it's always melted but and it's the refined kind so it doesn't smell or taste like coconut at all two eggs, a quarter cup of milk. Now you can use plant milk in these or you can use, um, anyway, you can use whatever kind of milk you want. That's fine. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract, one and a quarter cups of mashed banana. And for me, that's three big ones or like five small ones, okay? And then we want one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips or whatever kind of chocolate chips you have. If you don't have chocolate chips, don't sweat it. It's, it's going to be okay without them. And good. For the icing drizzle on top, and don't skip this part, it really does add a lot. One cup of confe confectioner's sugar. So that's one cup of icing sugar. The recipe calls for four teaspoons of milk. I start with two and I've never had to add more. Um, you don't want a really thin drizzle on top because it just it just goes everywhere but stay on top of the muffin. So I make mine a little bit thicker and then it's easier to pipe on or drizzle on with a spoon. And one quarter teaspoon vanilla extract. Okay, let's do that again. Two thirds cup of gluten-free all-purpose flour, one quarter cup granulated sugar, two tablespoons brown sugar, one quarter teaspoon cinnamon, one eighth teaspoon salt, five tablespoons of butter. So that was the streusel, I'll just give it to you again. Um, two thirds cup of gluten-free flour, or regular flour, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, two tablespoons brown sugar, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, one eighth teaspoon salt, and five tablespoons of melted butter. For the muffins itself, three cups of gluten-free flour, or whatever kind of flour that you wanna use. Um, not almond flour, don't use almond flour in these. It's gotta be regular flour or gluten-free flour. One tablespoon baking powder, one half teaspoon salt, one half cup granulated sugar, one quarter cup brown sugar, a half a cup of coconut oil. And that is the one that doesn't smell like coconut oil and it's gotta be melted if it's not already in liquid form. Two eggs, one quarter cup of whatever kind of milk you wanna use. Plant milk works really well in these. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. One and a quarter cups mashed banana. 
one cup of chocolate chips if you have them, and you should have them. You should always have chocolate chips in your in your baking cupboard. Okay, the icing drizzle. One cup of icing sugar, four teaspoons milk or cream, a plant milk, it doesn't matter, and I only ever use two teaspoons in this recipe. It really depends on the grade of icing sugar that you have. If you've got a really good one, then you're not going to need as much. If you've got a, a cheap one that is maybe got some fillers in it, whatever, you're going to need more. And one quarter teaspoon vanilla extract. Okay, let's get the shore on the road. Um, I just want to actually say before we start, do not use any of the um, sugar substitutes. They do not I mean, you could, but the real sugar has moisture to it. And that's what you want in a muffin, is that moisture. You don't want a dry muffin. And so don't use reduced fat, reduced anything in these muffins. Use the real deal. Okay, let's go. What you're going to need also is a whisk and your favorite spatula. This is my favorite, I love it. Always cooks good. And I always need one of these scrapers when I'm cooking. Let's do the streusel first. So we want two thirds cup of gluten-free all-purpose flour. And I actually have that here started already because I was filling up this and I had a little bit extra. We're gonna need that for later. Okay, to this we're going to add one quarter cup of granulated sugar, which I have right here. All of my measuring utensils here as well. We're going to need these. So that was one quarter cup. And then two tablespoons of brown sugar. And in these muffins, we use both white and brown sugar in the streusel and also in the muffin. And in the muffins, it's really, really important because it. The white sugar gives the white sugar will give it um, a nice crust underneath the streusel, and then the brown sugar is what's going to bring in the moisture. So two tablespoons of brown sugar, one and two. Awesome. These are going to be wonderful. What else do we need here? A quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh, that's my cumin. It looks like cinnamon, but it's not. <laughs> that would have been a bad mistake. Okay. And that was one quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Good. If you're a real cinnamon lover, you could even go a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. That would be okay. We are done now with the cinnamon. And then one eighth teaspoon of salt. So just a skiff of salt. I call it just a skiff. That's good. And then five tablespoons of unsalted butter or salted, doesn't matter. Actually, this is salted. And then we're just going to give it a stir together with a fork. This makes a lot of streusel and it's good. You want a lot of streusel on the top of your muffins. I The first time I made these, I went a little bit skimpy with the streusel. I had all kinds left over and it's just not as good. So you're going to have lots of streusel here. If it feels a little bit dry, add just a titch, a titch, just a little bit more butter and you'll be fine. And then after it's there, after it's all mixed together, put it in your freezer because we, we want it to be all nice and firm and then it's easier to crumble on top of the muffins. Okay. And before I put it in 
I always just give it a little taste to make sure that it's good. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, in the freezer it goes. Good stuff. Now, let's make our muffins. Get a big bowl. Three cups of gluten-free flour, or regular, whatever. That's what we're going to start with. And level your flour off on the top. Very good. Getting a little bit messy. That's two. And let's go for three. time on my bike. Good. That is three cups. And you can put that away now. Give me some more room. Okay. And next we want one tablespoon of baking powder. One tablespoon seems like a lot, but you need it. These are, it's a lot of muffin. It's a lot of dough. Okay, one tablespoon, one tablespoon of baking powder. I don't know if I just said teaspoon or tablespoon, but it's one tablespoon. And if you've cooked with me before, you know that I really like to use some, how do you call this in English? Cream of tartar. So maybe three quarters of a, of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. If you don't have it, it means you haven't cooked with me before, or you, can, or you just don't have it. And if you don't have it, it's not a big deal. But if you have it, it's a good idea to use, especially if you're cooking gluten-free. And you'll notice that this recipe does not have xanthan gum if you're cooking gluten-free. I rarely use xanthan gum. Rarely. I just... I'm finding that it's not necessary. Okay, now let's add to this our sugars. No, first of all, let's put in the salt. Let's not forget salt. Half teaspoon. One quarter and one quarter is half. Good, okay. Now let's move on to our sugars. We want one quarter cup of brown sugar. sugar, but I'm telling you, these are not diet muffins. Whatever you bake, it should always taste good. Use the best ingredients that you can get. Don't use reduced fat anything. If you're going to have a muffin, if you're going to have something baked, just eat it as it's meant to be. You can cut calories somewhere else. That's my belief anyway. So let's give it a stir, a whisk. Whisk it all up. If you see any, I don't, can you guys hear some music? <laughs> Here in Thailand, they love ice cream. And so the ice cream man comes. Uh, he's got a, a chest on his motorcycle, a sidecar on his motorcycle. And he goes around, plays this music, and people are forever coming out of their houses and buying ice cream. Okay, great. We're going to put that to the side for a moment and we're going to do our wet ingredients. So in another bowl, we're going to put in uh, our coconut oil. So that's a half cup of coconut oil. Mine looks quite yellow because I had a little bit extra leftover um, butter. 
so I don't like to waste that, so I put it in with the coconut oil. Sometimes I do a half butter, half coconut oil. I really believe in, in mixing up your oils when you're, when you're baking. Good. Excellent. Yeah, let's put this over here. What is next here? Two eggs. Your eggs should be room temperature. If they're not, pop them in, into some warm water. Not hot, just warm. Warm water for about five minutes. Three, yeah, five minutes. And they'll be okay. They'll be room temperature that way. And that's why we do it this way. The egg was actually not good. I get my eggs at the market and sometimes you get good ones and sometimes you don't. There, that's a good one. And one more here. There. One more go. I'm afraid now. Okay. One more. So we need for the muffins here. One quarter cup of whatever kind of plant milk, real milk that you're using. And two teaspoons of vanilla extract. New bottle. Two teaspoons. Vanilla extract, like two teaspoons, is especially important if you are cooking gluten-free. I always add a little bit extra when I'm cooking gluten-free. I know I said two, I'm putting two and a half, because I love vanilla, but also because I'm cooking gluten-free. Good enough. Now we want the mashed bananas. One and a quarter cup, which is five really big ones, <laughs> sorry, three really big ones or five to six small ones. Anyway, mash it up. You, you don't want it to be really homogenous. You want it to be chunky. You want chunks of banana in these muffins. There. Did I say one and a half cups or one and a quarter? Anyways, one and a quarter cup. And one cup of chocolate chips. Chocolate chips we'll put in Last. Actually, I'm going to put them in right now so I don't forget. One cup. Now we can add them to the dry mixture. Good. You guys having fun yet? Let's give our wet mixture, ooh, give it a whisk. message on my screen. I've got to get rid of that. Good. Okay. Now you can go ahead and um, heat up your oven now. Wow, incessant. There we go. Get rid of you. Um, I'm so sorry. There's so many messages here. I have to remember to turn that off next time. Okay. Now we're going to heat up our oven. Heat it up to 400. When I make muffins, I cook them at, f at 400 for five minutes, and then I turn it down and do the rest. So we're going to do these muffins at 400 degrees for five minutes, and then 350 degrees for 15 minutes. And that five minutes, make sure that you set a timer, because <laughs> five minutes baking goes super fast, way faster than five minutes at the dentist. So set a timer. I overbaked them before. So let's go ahead and warm up our oven. Set it to 400 and you're good to go. So let's add, let's add our banana mixture. Just 
after. Now, your batter, your muffin batter, is going to be um, very thick. Okay. So as you're, as you're mixing it, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, this feels like too much flour, but it's not. You want these muffins, to, the batter, to be fairly thick because you want it to stand up in the, in the muffin tins. Now the trick to getting really big muffins is to use really big muffin, a really big muffin mold. I just have a regular muffin pan that makes your regular normal size muffins. So what I do to extend it is um, I use a paper liner that's really quite tall. There. So this is the texture. Yeah, it's really thick. And that's exactly how you, how you want it. Go through it, and if there seems to be any lumps from flour, now is a good time to get rid of them. Mine is good. I don't have any lumps. So put that to the side for a moment and get out your, your baking pan. Okay, so when I'm making these, I use just the normal cup. You can get these here. I don't know what you what you're using, maybe you've got some other sort of liner. And then the paper liner on top. So then you can fill it right up and get a nice, tall, amazing muffin. And I use these muffin liners um, first in here because the paper against the muffin pan might give you quite a crispy bottom of the muffin. And I don't like those. I'd like it all to be nice and soft and fluffy and yummy. So this is just an extra layer of insulation. So that's what I do. Now these paper liners, you can make them up. Try six by six, and if that seems too small for you, then try eight by eight. Okay, so that's like my hand. They're, they're fairly substantial. And this will make you 12 good sized muffins. Sometimes with this recipe, I limit it to 11 muffins. And then I get 11 stand up nice and great muffins. If you make, if you use 12 muffin molds, you'll get um, 10 nice big ones and probably two half size. So play with it however you want. Actually, tried to film this yesterday. I had these already yesterday. Um, I did the whole thing, and for some reason, the camera turned off after six minutes. So I got six minutes of video. <laughs> Gave all those muffins away, and then I'm making it again today for you. So somebody else is going to get more muffins. Great. Okay. That's good for now. And if you've got a large spoon, sometimes I do it with this scoop, or sometimes a, a large spoon. You have to be fairly careful putting the batter in so that it doesn't end up all over uh, the, the paper molds. If it gets all over the paper molds, they don't look as pretty because the the batter will turn black. Does it sound like I'm saying this from experience? It's because I have. And then it just doesn't look pretty when you've got black, dried on muffin batter cooked to a crisp on your nice muffin molds. So, so I'm using just a big spoon and gently glide it in. And I need two spoonfuls for each muffin. 
a little bit finicky, but you'll be glad that you took the time to do it right from the start. And your batter should smell amazing. Mine sure does. Yum, yum. How are you doing? Okay? I wish you guys were here in my kitchen and we were really doing this together. Mm, that's good. Whenever I get my jab jabs and can come back to Canada without doing a an expensive quarantine. Uh, I look forward to seeing all of you. And I don't know how many of you are runners. I know Deanna's probably watching this and she's a runner. We actually do um, mileage challenges each month now together. She's in Canada and I'm here in Crenna. Um, anyway, Brooks Glycerin are an amazing shoe to run in. I just absolutely love them. I made a mistake and bought the Brooks Ghost, which which might be okay for, for some people. I like a shoe that's really cushioned and so that's the, the glycerin works for me. So when my dogs chewed up my ghosts, I was sad and a little bit angry at them. Not angry, irritated, that's the word. I don't get angry. Um, but then I got the right ones. I got the, the glycerins and oh my goodness, I sure love them. And I've run in ev everything, Mizunos and Asics and lots of different ones, but Brooks Glycerin is the shoe for me. So I've chosen to go with 11 muffins. So that I've got 11 nice, huge, big ones. I'm evening them up now. We're not gonna forget our streusel. Oh, this one needs more for sure. You could even put walnuts in the batter. Okay, in the fridge and get your your spruce out of the freezer. It wasn't long in, in there long enough to get really hard. It's just super firm. And then I go in there with my fork and just try to get it so that it's a little bit more. Not so such big ones anyway. But you don't want it to be real fine either. That's what mine looks like. Okay. And go ahead and all over your muffin tops. You're going to use all of it. Make sure the muffin top is completely covered with the streusel. These are amazing in the morning with your coffee. Just so yum. These are also, um, I've frozen them before and they freeze really well. When they come out, the streusel is soft, quite soft. And if that bothers you, you can just pop them in the oven for a few minutes and it'll, it'll crunch back up again. These are also, if you have any left over, which I can't imagine that you will, but if you do, then um, in the fridge, you can do these couple days in the fridge 
and I actually like them cold because it gives a, it's still a moist muffin, but it's kind of dense, and it's yummy. But these straight out of the oven are just great. You don't need any butter with them because they're so flavorful and soft and fluffy and yummy. Okay, good, this is looking good. These are going to go in the oven for five minutes at 400. That's good. So let's pop these in the oven right now. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Set your timer. Now we are going to make the icing drizzle right away. Another bowl for that. Yes. We have another one. One cup of confectioner's sugar, icing sugar, whatever you want to call it. Oh, here. Perfect. And the recipe calls for four teaspoons of milk. I'm just using two to start off with. And that's generally all I ever need. And a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. Oh, no, my hands are wet. There we go. the beauty of having a small kitchen. Everything is at your fingertips. And quarter teaspoon. Great. Use a fork and give that a stir. If, if it's lumpy and you can't make it smooth, then go ahead and add more milk, but add just like a half a teaspoon at a time. And I think that that's all I need. You don't want this to be really, really fluid. Not at all. If it sets up too much by the time you get around to icing or drizzling your, your drizzle on the muffins, you can add just a teeny bit more milk. Okay. Yes, I'm liking that. Great. Okay. So mine is like this. And, and that is the consistency. It's, it's fluid, but it's nice and, and thick, so it's going to set up nicely on the top of, of the streusel of the muffins. So, now it's time to just go and relax. Grab a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, grab a book, whatever you want. Um, when your timer goes off, go ahead to turn it down to 350 and bake your muffins for 15 minutes more and then we'll come back and then cool them. Make sure that they're really, really cool before you do the streusel. <laughs> Sorry, before you do the drizzle on top. If they're not cool enough, then your drizzle will just um, melt all over and it'll end up more on the edges than it will on top and it just doesn't look nice. It's just not, not a nice presentation. So once they're cool enough, then we'll come back together and do that part and then we'll have a taste test so you guys go do what you want to do okay so now it's nighttime and I am finally finishing this video for today so my muffins are all baked they turned out beautiful they're so nice and tall they look amazing isn't that great that's with the streusel on top and they're huge they're big great okay so you've got your, your glaze all done, right? And make sure that your glaze is not too thin. If it's too thin, it'll look like, there, this one was too thin. It'll just look like that. And it doesn't stand up. It doesn't look like anything. It just sort of melts everywhere. And it's not a very nice presentation and it will just make your streusel sort of soft on top. 
which is not what you want. So let's get going here. And I think this is standing up fairly good. It's still liquidy, but it's got some body to it. Now, if you've got proper piping equipment, you can go ahead and pipe yours on. I don't. And what I like to use is a fork. And there, just drizzle it on. However you think looks beautiful. These are your muffins. You can do it any way you want. But there we go. Yeah. That looks good, hey? Well, this is one of my favorite things to make. So satisfying. Let's do these all. There we go. Nice. Gorgeous. Then, because I am only one person here, I get to give all of these away. I can't eat all these. There we go. And these are exciting to give away too because when people open up the container and they see the, these, they're like, what? These look amazing. And then in your heart of hearts, you're like, yeah, I know. I do amazing work. But you'll just be all modest and humble and say, yeah, they're not too bad. Awesome. Looking good. And I made 11 today. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. Because I really wanted to make some really huge ones, really, really big for my friends. And there. too late now <laughs> to go running around giving these away so they will keep until tomorrow and I did mention that these are you can freeze them they're good in the fridge for a couple days the best way to eat them is right out of the oven after you you've done your your drizzle okay so I'm going to leave it at that great. It's been fun cooking with you guys today. Thank you for getting a hold of me and telling me you wanted this recipe on the, the channel here, on the Barefoot in the Kitchen channel, because I like to cook things that you guys are going to be excited about, things that you're super excited about these muffins, and for good reason. Enjoy your muffins, enjoy your life. I hope that everybody is happy and healthy, and just a message that I miss you all. And I can't wait to come back. How long have I been saying that? Like since the start of COVID, <laughs> which has seriously delayed my flight back. And it's been a long time since I've seen my daughters and my friends. Soon though, hey? Soon, I hope. Okay, enough of that. Miss you guys. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Um, send me pictures of what you make. I really do love to see pictures of what you guys make um, when you make one of my, my recipes. I like to see how it turns out for you. And that's it. Thank you very much. And I will see you again soon. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll never miss one of my awesome videos <laughs> for my fake cooking show. Thanks you guys.